everyone. Um, yeah, I'm still, I'm still drinking the tea. Uh, <laughs> I have a sensitive mouth. I don't like it getting burnt. <laughs> don't, don't judge me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to talk about top surgery stresses really fast because I think, like, for me, when I heard about other people having surgery, I was just, like, so wrapped up in my own jealousy that, like, I didn't even think about, you know, being supportive of other people, and that's, like, that's, um, understandable, but not something I'm proud of either, uh, <coughs> um, but yeah, no, it's, it's tough, uh, especially if you haven't had surgery to think about how someone else could be stressed out about it. It doesn't feel like it makes much sense why someone would be stressed out about it and what could possibly go wrong. It's like it's something that you've been waiting for forever and and it's like the climax of your life, right? And if you want it, that is. Um, but it's like, it doesn't feel like that right now. Um, and, well, it does, but it doesn't. See, like... I'm really excited, and I'm really excited to to go through with it, but I'm also really scared. Um, like, yesterday I found out that, like, over the weekend one of my friends died, and I wasn't, I wasn't as close to this person as I could be, um, but it's, but it's still so heavy, and it's so sad, and I've never known anyone who's died who was, like, my friend, you know, and not someone I'm, like, biologically related to. Um, but even, even so, like, the only other person I know who died was my grandpa, who had Alzheimer's, and so it's like, and I know this sounds terrible, but you, you, you expect that. Um, seeing as it's, a you know, degenerative, and there's no cure, and, and it kind of gets to the point where you, you almost wish that they would just die so that they would be in less pain. At least that's how I felt when I was 12, you know. Um, I remember my grandpa being really frustrated with his Alzheimer's and and, rec and recognizing its existence at first until, you know, until he no longer was able to. And anyway, I'm getting really sidetracked, but... But yeah, my friend, my friend died over the weekend, and I was talking with my other friend about it, who said that they, by extension, know about, you know, or indirectly and by extension, know about ten people who died this month, you know, and by, like, people I know directly and people, like, friends of friends of friends or whatever, um, the thanks to that one friend that I talked to, I know, I now know about twelve people who died this month, um, and what an eerie way to start off the new year, you know, how, how weird, and how interesting to, to be beginning, um, with death, and not that death is inherently bad, but it's a really, like, white western concept of, like, death as being something that should be, like, avoided at all costs, um, but it's just so eerie, you know, uh, and, and I'll admit to being, like, really affected by, like, white-centric culture and, like, belief systems, and, and I'm a Westerner, and I was raised in Western culture, and so, like, it's hard for me to, like, even consider death as something other than <laughs> something to avoid, uh, and I know a lot of other cultures, like, just see it as, you know, the next step, just a part of life, um, is death, and, and I'm not there yet, uh, Am I afraid to die? I don't... I don't know. Sometimes I get in this weird headspace where, like... Where it's like I recognize that I exist and that, like... That I, like... That I'm more than just, like, a vessel, right? And, like, I have this body and I occupy it and, like, there's, like, this 
this like being that occupies other people's bodies and 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 I interact with them and that's it just blows my mind and I know that sounds like super hippie or whatever but like it like really weirds me out <laughs> if that makes sense like to recognize your own existence and like I know that I like go and I coast through life or whatever but like to recognize that I am living and that like one day this is not going to exist anymore that one day I won't exist in this space anymore is just so weird to me um and it could, it kind of upsets me and sometimes it puts me in this like like depression and sometimes it just like weirds me out so I like try to shake myself out of it um I'm never particularly happy about it though uh I do know that it, I just usually get really pensive anyway and so like the whole concept of like so many people are already dying and then now I'm just paranoid that I might die in my surgery um like like what if I just go under anesthesia or whatever and I never wake up and 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 I, and I mean what if like really it's like that's how you're gonna die like that would be it because that's like the most painless death ever right and so like that can't be too bad but it still weirds me out <laughs> um they're like what if I get in, like a plane accident or whatever and like the odds of that are really slim in comparison to car accidents and I go in cars all the time and I'm not terrified of that and I'm not even afraid to fly I, I grew up economically advantaged and so I flew all the time but it's just so weird and then it's like what if I miss like parts of my body you know um because like the thing is is I don't hate my chest and I just don't consider it mine and while you know and I love my best friends but I don't necessarily want them attached to me you know <laughs> um and I just want to make sure that like that I honor my body and that I respect my body and and I and I show it love and an appreciation and and I know that like boobs aren't necessarily like conscious beings or whatever, but I I sincerely think that like um that everything can like absorb and give out energy and I know that sounds like super hippie of me, but you know, it can't be created or destroyed and so it just goes around and who's to say what it can or cannot become, right? And and so I just, I just hope that I, that we split, <laughs> no pun intended, I just hope that we split on good terms, you know? And, yeah, cause, um, cause I don't, I don't show love enough, and I don't, and I don't give love enough, um, and I'm hoping to, to work on that, and I say that all the time, I hope to work on this, and I hope to work on that, and sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't, but, um, yeah, I don't know if anyone else who's had, like, surgery has ever felt this way, uh, but, um, but, yeah, uh, and maybe other people who are going to have surgery soon may also feel this way, um, I know it sounds, like, selfish, like, Ira, so many people have donated to your surgery fund, and, and you're going to be having surgery soon, aren't you excited? And then I just meet them with these, like, big eyes that are blank, and, um, and it just makes me look really unappreciative, and I am excited, but I'm also really scared, and so it's hard for me to, like, express one or the other, um, it depends on the day and the time you ask me, but, um, on that note, like, thank you for everyone who's been donating, um, Thank you so much. Thank you all for your support. And, um, yeah, uh, I, I really love a lot of you, and, and many of you I've had personal conversations with, and many of you I consider friends, and many of you I don't know at all. Um, but I know that you care about me on some level, and it's interesting to know that people who don't know you care about you and love you. Um, even if they may not even say it, and that's just so weird to me, uh, but I also do that, I don't say it, you know, and, and I want to be, like, nice and cool or whatever, and be like, yeah, I can feel that, but I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, but, um, but I appreciate it, and, um, and I hope to, to be able to, give back love and, and send back love with, um, with 
to a higher frequency um, in the future. Anyway, thanks for listening to me, Blab, and um, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.